Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Yesterday, the Oklahoma City Thunder came into Los Angeles and played the Los Angeles Lakers. And let me just say, at halftime, the Lakers were ahead. It was clear early on that the Oklahoma City Thunder, who as I make this video, are the top ranked team record-wise in the Western Conference. It was clear early on that the Oklahoma City Thunder had absolutely no answer for Andrew Bynum. Not only was Lakers center Andrew Bynum dominating the game, he was doing it with attitude, right? He was actually drawing with Oklahoma City Thunder players. It was clear that he and Kendrick Perkins were not getting along, and one of those guys was going to get shown up. Well, what happened is that the game continued, and one of my favorite players... Kobe Bryant once again shot the Lakers out of the game. Okay, now I've made a previous video where I talk about the Lakers and I got a lot of feedback and a lot of people love Kobe Bryant. You, you cannot say anything off kilter about Kobe without getting blowback. Well, all I can say is understand I'm not an NBA announcer. I'm not trying to sell tickets for the Lakers or for the Oklahoma City Thunder. Right? This is a different crowd here. We're gamblers. All I want to do is make money. And whether I can make money off the Lakers or my beloved Knicks, then great. So when I look at the box score after watching the game, and I see that Kobe was 7 for 25. Let me repeat that. He was 7 for 25 in a game in which his center, Andrew Bynum, was 10 for 15. What that tells me is that the Lakers have literally a 1 or 2 percent chance at best to win the Western Conference. You know, other teams don't have this problem. They don't have a superstar who's going to continue to shoot even when he's not the most dominant player on his team or on the court, right? Now, Kobe, when he's on, he's the best I've seen since Jordan when he's on. But Kobe's a streak player. And when Kobe's off, he doesn't have a plan B. Right? The uh, winners, the great players, the Magic Johnsons, when a Kareem is red hot, or a Byron Scott or a Bob McAdoo is red hot, even Jordan, when Scottie Pippen was red hot, or when John Paxton was red hot, or Craig Hodges, when he was red hot, you'd be surprised how even the best scorers in the league, like MJ, would pass them the basketball. Understand, the Lakers might have the most talent in their starting lineup in the Western Conference, right? The best big man tandem, in my opinion, in this league are Paul Gasol and Andrew Bynum, right? Understand, Gasol has been to multiple All-Star games. Andrew Bynum was in this year's All-Star game. You know, Bynum's line from yesterday, and this is just another day in the life of Andrew Bynum, if you're keeping track, Bynum literally had 13 rebounds, right? 10 of 15 shooting, 4 block shots, 25 points. Now, maybe the mainstream media hasn't caught on yet, 
but Andrew Bynum is the best player on the Lakers. Now let me just say, with Bynum and Gasol, the best low post tandem in the league, certainly in the Western Conference, and with Kobe Bryant, the Lakers should be, quite frankly, running things. Other teams are put together with scotch tape. The Oklahoma City Thunder, when you look at Durant, Westbrook, and Harden, you understand that they don't have a dominant low post scorer, right? They don't have a dominant low post rebounder. They have guys like Ibaka and Kendrick Perkins underneath the basket, right? They don't match up with the Lakers or shouldn't match up with the Lakers. When you think about the world champion, Dallas Mavericks, understand Tyson Chandler right now is wearing a Nick jersey. Karan Butler is long gone. J.J. Barea is long gone. Their players are long in the tooth. Jason Kidd's in his late 30s. Sean Merriman's on the other side of 30. Who can forget Dirk Nowitzki's start of his season where he was struggling, right? And of course, if you want to talk about older teams, just look at Manu Ginobili, Tim Duncan, Tony Parker, and the San Antonio Spurs. So understand the Lakers, talent-wise, really should be at the upper end of the scale. They have the best center in the Western Conference, bar none. And instead, what you have is Kobe taking 10 more shots than Andrew Bynum last night in one of the biggest games of the year against the one seed, the Oklahoma City Thunder, and hitting three fewer shots, right? I know Kobe's game looks good, but gamblers know he's costing his team. And all I can say is the Lakers, quite frankly, aren't playing as a team. We can blame whoever we want. Mike Brown, first year as Laker head coach. The bottom line is it's not Mike Brown's fault when a star player is shooting 25 times. Let me also point out too that the dominant player, it's been this kind of morning. Give me a second. Let me just point out too that the dominant player on the Oklahoma City Thunder yesterday was Russell Westbrook. The Lakers do not have a great perimeter defender. You know, all I can say is I was raised in New York City. I'm a fan of St. John's, longtime fan of Ron Artest. The days of Ron Artest being a shutdown perimeter defender are long over, right? The Lakers had no answers for Russell Westbrook. None. These defects are structural. I remember when Kobe was on first team defense and what have you, Kobe and Artes simply cannot stop guys outside. And let me just say, you know, there comes a time when really whatever the public narrative is, right? the Lakers, championships, Kobe's a great player, uh, he leads the league at scoring, whatever the narrative is, there comes a time in every gambler's life where that gambler has to say, forget the public narrative, I'm going to believe my own eyes. I'm here to tell you that on futures plays, if you have the Lakers on a futures play to come out the West, you need to hedge that bet right now because they're not doing it. And let me just say, when you see a team that has the talent, and the hot hands like Andrew Bynum. And keep in mind, again, 10 of 15 shooting last night. The hot hands are not getting the ball. I mean, literally, other guys are taking 10 more shots than he is. Let me also point out, too, Paul Gasol. You realize Gasol only got 11 shot attempts yesterday. Who on Oklahoma City can even stick Paul Gasol? How are Bynum and Gasol only getting one fewer shot attempt combined than Kobe took yesterday? Right? This team is operating at 
far less than potential. Needless to say, they got run in the second half of yesterday's game. And understand, the Lakers aren't going to beat Oklahoma City in Oklahoma City. Look at Oklahoma City's home record. So when Oklahoma City comes to Los Angeles and Durant's over 20, Westbrook leaves with 36 points. Both of them have healthy shooting percentages. Westbrook, 27 shot attempts. He hit 13 of them. Right? And let me just point out, Westbrook shooting too much, quite frankly, because other guys on Oklahoma City are better shooters. Right? But my point to you is simply, when Westbrook and Durant are not stopped by Laker defense, and when the Lakers are operating at such low efficiency, what that adds up to is an early exit in the playoffs by the Lakers. Be prepared for the finger pointing this team whatever the talent on the roster isn't playing as a team they have no chance to come out of the west forget them beating miami forget them beating chicago they're not even going to get that opportunity it's march i'm here to say the lakers don't come out of the west not even close even though they have the best center one of the game's best power forwards, and the game's leading scorer. It's a tragedy, and we're watching this car crash in real time as it happens. Let me know what you think. Leave your comments for me here online. I encourage everyone to take a look at this box score. We've been talking about it here, right? There's an earlier Laker video I did, and after that video... The Lakers throw down this performance, which exemplifies all of the problems on the team. Let me say, you know, when you've only hit seven shots, how do you continue to shoot the basketball when you have the best center in the conference? Also, for those of you who believe in it's a sizable number that Kobe Bryant is Michael Jordan, in fact, that Kobe is better than Michael, all I can say is this. Did Michael Jordan ever have the best center in his conference on his team? Ever. Right? The Jordan I remember was dealing with guys like Bill Cartwright in the paint. Right? Stacy King. That's a far cry from Andrew Bynum, right? I mean, the only center in the conversation in the game with Andrew Bynum, really at this point, is Dwight Howard, right? So for Kobe to have Andrew Bynum and for Kobe to have Paul Gasol, how many power forwards pass better than Paul Gasol? For Kobe to have that to work with, and to be getting run at home by Oklahoma City. That should tell you all you need to know, right? Don't just go by the scoring average. Go by the shooting percentage. And go by the player efficiency, right? The Lakers are in deep trouble. Let me know what you think. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com and look at this box score with Oklahoma City, an elite team, it says it all. Thanks for watching.